Hi, I'm Megan. Welcome to today's live reading from The Colors of Love by K.R. Ray, presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Join me. Prologue, May 2001. A cop car, lights blazing through the night, sat empty at the bottom of the pathway to the point when Lance Dunn parked behind it. God, please don't let me be too late to help my girls. Erupting from his car in a flash, he sprinted up the pathway to the private garden lookout. The incline wasn't that bad, nowhere near as taxing as running the bleachers during training camp. He could crest the top in no time flat. A quarter of the way up, he blew past a fat officer lumbering and out of breath. The officer's reflexes were as slow as his pace because he only managed to huff out a week. Wait a minute, son, as Lance is back at Lance's back after Lance rounded the next bend. Almost to the top, Lance caught up with a second officer, much more in shape and moving fast. However, Lance was 10 years his junior, and they crested the hill simultaneously. Both assessed the situation in an instant. About 60 feet away, Melody Wilkins and Imani Jordan stood side by side facing Melody's boyfriend, Kevin, who was about 6 feet from the girls. It appeared they were standing around having a normal discussion, except for the gun Kevin trained on Imani. The cop drew his gun and crept forward, and Lance stayed glued to his left side. He could see the trio better. Kevin's normally handsome, young, Paul Newman-like face held a, held, a pure look, held a look of pure hatred. Poor Melody seemed even more petite and fragile than ever as she shivered in fear, her blonde curls shaking, her usual peaches and cream skin blanched sheer white. In contrast, Imani looked ready to kick Kevin's ass if she could. Her round, brown face glared at Kevin, fists balled as even each of her hair twists seemed to bristle with indignant fury. To Lance's surprise, none of the three noticed him or the officer even when they drew within 20 feet. The cop halted Lance with a hand gesture before he addressed Kevin. Son, put that gun down. His voice thundered through the still night. You don't want to do this. We can work this out without anyone getting hurt. All right, son. The officer target, targeted Kevin's shoulder. Lance stood still as a statue, not wanting to distract the officer. He figured the cop was a good shot, though. Based on his nonsense, based on his no-nonsense mannerisms and steady stance, he didn't look like he missed much to target practice. Kevin glanced their direction, but kept the gun honed in on Imani. Ignoring the officer, Kevin refocused on Melody and Imani and uttered something that Lance couldn't quite overhear. Whatever he said, it made Melody run to Kevin, screaming his name. Stop, the cop yelled, although he didn't fire. Kevin dropped the gun to his side as Melody approached. Then Lance swore he heard Kevin say, I will haunt you forever. And in a flash, Kevin put the gun to his right temple and pulled the trigger. And the unexpected movement and subsequent loud boom pummeled Lance like a bomb shock wave. He recoiled and covered his head and ears. As he attempted to rationalize the situation, the sight of Melody trying to catch Kevin's half-headless corpse chilled him to the bone. His limbs locked, frozen solid. Transfixed, he watched Kevin's dead weight force Melody down to her knees until she cradled his lifeless body, screaming, No, for what seemed like hours. Her scream pierced straight through his soul. No amount of time could ever erase that sound from his memory. Unable to move and forever scarred, he vowed to protect Melody and Imani from further agony, even if it was the last thing he did. Never again, he whispered. Separated. Although he swore a lifetime passed, in reality it only took 10 seconds for Lance to react. Time slipped in slow, into slow motion and stalled for the first few seconds as Imani sprinted to Melody from her closer vantage point. Each movement seemed exaggerated and drawn out, similar to pulling saltwater taffy. His mind just kept repeating, protect, like a scratch CD. As he prepared to rip off his shirt to cover Melody and cocoon her from all the blood and gore, he glanced down and frowned. His tight black t-shirt wouldn't provide near enough protection. Imani seemed to read his mind, and she removed her tracksuit jacket and draped it over Melody's shoulders. Back in control, Lance took off to join them, but he became aware of a noise by his side. The officer was yelling at him and Imani, Stop before you contaminate the scene. Please, he must be kidding. 
Lance ran an agitated hand over his head. The only crime was letting Melody sit in a growing pool of blood as she screamed and held a headless corpse. However, the cop's stance and tone left no room for argument. The cop blocked him just before he reached Melody. Stand down, son. Lance raised his hand in surrender when he tried, while he tried to reason with the guy. We just need to get Melody out of here. Please, officer. We'll take care of her, but we need to process the scene and get everyone's statements. Annoyed but determined not to get into trouble with the law, Lance glanced over to the cop's shoulders toward Melody and Imani. To his surprise, about ten cops scattered around like cockroaches after you turned on the lights. One officer sequestered Imani while the fat, lumbering officer disentangled Melody from the gory scene with minimal disturbance. Two cops interviewed a few couples who were using the landscaped garden as a vehicle-free lover's lane at the wrong time. The text photographed the area, and the fit cop secured the scene while another came over and questioned Lance. As he officer answered the officer's <clears throat> pointless questions, two other cops cordoned off the path up to the point. Too late, Lance heard his football teammates, John, Joe, and Big Tony, at the top of the pathway answering his earlier call to help, but the officers ushered them away. After Lance finished answering the cops' questions, he looked around to get his bearings. He spotted Melody and tried to go comfort her, wanting only to get her out of that bloodied yellow dress. However, the fat cop and their university president kept him at bay. Lance frowned. When had the president arrived? Turning into frustration, he saw one cop finishing up with Imani. As soon as the officer left, he ran over. Imani pra practically leapt into his waiting arms, her body trembling and shuddering. It's okay, he repeated as he held Imani tight, trying to abate her trembles. Minutes later, the university president checked on them. Lance attempted to focus on the words coming out of the man's pasty, bald head, but he only processed snippets. The university regrets such a horrible incident. Promise to get you into mandatory counseling tomorrow. Let's keep tonight's events private. Treat this as an accidental discharge. When the president left, the fit cop came over with a grim look on his face. You're free to go now. We'll be in touch if we need anything else. What about our friend? Lance asked, wanting to get both of his girls out of this hellhole. My partner already took her back to her dormitory 20 minutes ago. The officer replied as he walked off to meet the coroner. Shocked, Lance, looked, Lance and Imani looked around, but Melody had vanished. Aftermath Melody shivered on the shower floor. Oh God, when would she awake? When would she awaken screaming from this hellacious nightmare? Bits of brain matter and blood circled lazily, holding patterns around the drain. She scrubbed her skin until it almost peeled and bled, but she swore remnants of Kevin remained. She studied her wrinkling skin. It looked like alien tissue under a microscope. Her shivers intensified. When did the water turn ice cold? Somehow she hoisted her non-responsive body up into a standing position and turned off the shower. Blinded by a continuous stream of tears, she found herself shivering on her bed dressed in her warmest pajamas. How? With her bedside lamp on its lowest setting, its dim light failed to illuminate anything past her bed. She looked around her dorm room, but it offered no answers. It didn't matter. She snuggled under the covers. She would never feel warm again. How could she when Kevin hollowed out her insides and ripped her heart to shreds? Stupidly, her mind replayed Kevin's final words. I will haunt you forever. And a new onslaught of shivers convulsed throughout her body. Why? Why would Kevin kill himself? And those words, those horrid words, I will haunt you forever. She shook her head violently. Kevin hadn't meant it. They locked eyes and she knew in the last millisecond Kevin didn't want to pull the trigger. He loved her. Memories flashed of their first kiss, their date at the point, the long walks, and their first time when Kevin fed her strawberries and cream. Conveniently, she skipped past the slap, the jealous behavior, the manhandling, and the beating. Only one possible explanation existed, just as Kevin warned her repeated times. Imani and Lance. 
Kevin was 100% right. They were to blame. Imani and Lance always interfered in their lives, butted in under the pretense of friendship. Deep down, her conscience flinched. If it weren't for Lance and Imani, she would probably be lying dead on a cold, sterile slab in the morgue. Kevin pulled the gun on her before they arrived. She rubbed her forehead and felt for the for indentations or bruising where Kevin dug the barrel of the gun into her skin. Fresh, hot tears flowed as she struggled to banish all memories. If only she could forget Kevin, Lance, and Imani. Maybe if she curled up in a tight ball and tunneled deep under her covers for days or weeks, maybe, just maybe, the pain would subside. A harsh, abrupt knock rattled her dorm room door and she jumped a foot. Both hands flew to cover her mouth and her racing heart. Who the hell? Without making a sound, she sat up in bed, wiped her eyes, and frowned. Whoever it was, there was no way in hell she planned on opening the door. If she stayed still, the intruder would figure no one was home and go away. Long seconds ticked past. This time, the knock came louder and more insistent. Melanie, open up, Imani said. Melanie frowned. Why didn't Imani just use her keys to enter their room? She noticed Imani's tracksuit jacket hanging on the back of Imani's desk chair where Melanie placed it after the cop escorted her home. When Imani first draped the jacket over her shoulders at the point, it felt so heavy. She swore the heavy burden of guilt weighed her down, but then she realized Imani's bulky keychain weighed down the side pocket. Imani couldn't get in their room because Melanie had her keys. She breathed a sigh of relief. Thank heavens for small blessings. Imani knocked again. I know you're in there, Melody. Melody refused to move a muscle. Fine, Imani said as her voice became more annoyed. I'll just go to the RA and have her open up our door. Damn it. Melody raced to open the door and hit it with her open palm. Of course, Imani wouldn't go away that easily. Please don't. Then open up. Imani said something more frustrated. It's late, and I'm tired, and I'm worried sick about you. You shouldn't be in there alone. Melody rested her head on the door. Her right hand flattened against it near where she could tell Imani stood. I know. I'm sorry, Imani. But I just can't. Somehow she felt like Imani assumed the same pose on the other side of the door. I promise you can come back tomorrow. Tomorrow? Imani sh sounded shocked and pissed. Please, Imani, she pleaded, new tears falling fresh. I need to be alone tonight. Please, just for one night. Imani sounded like she might relent. Where am I supposed to go, Melody? Imani hesitated and her voice deepened with concern. What about you? I don't think it's wise to let you stay by yourself after everything that's happened. Melody almost couldn't speak through the tears that felt like a, fell like a waterfall. She knew Imani cared, but she couldn't deal with Imani's condemning looks or judgmental attitude, or worse yet, the empathetic pity. I know what you think, but I promise I'll be fine. I just need time to process this alone. Can you give me that time, please? At her breaking point, she clenched her eyes shut and whispered, God, please let Imani relent.